All right, so hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of the Female Fight Fans podcast. I'm your host, the founder and CEO of FemaleFightFans.com, Erin McKell, and I am so excited because today we have a very special guest coming on the podcast, uh, Carrie Williams, who is one of my inspirations and a female that I really, really look up to, uh, both as a boxer and as a businesswoman. She's done so many things. Um, she has done everything from actually boxing herself to being a, an Olympic level boxing coach. And she's also the founder of the Too Pretty brand. And as all of these titles, she's been featured on so many different publications from uh, TV appearances on NBC and CBS and also on CNBC's Billion Dollar Buyer, um, where she pitched the Too Pretty brand, um, She's been a contributor for publications like Livestrong, and she knows she does speaking gigs all over the world and has also created fitness DVDs. She's the founder of Primetime Boxing, which is a nonprofit organization that specifically um, offers scholarships for those who can't afford training to be able to um, grow in the sport um, that's youth-based. And she also owns a boxing club called The Stables, which is in LA. So she does, as you can see, she does so many things and that doesn't even really scratch the surface. So I am so excited uh, to have her on today. So welcome, Carrie, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for you to be here. Um, so you and I, obviously, I have followed you online, as I told you, for a long time now, because um, you're so such great content, and I love everything that you do, especially with like showing your workouts, and I feel like you approach content creation in the fitness world from a different perspective than most people, which I think is really, really great. It's super accessible, but it's still very knowledgeable. Um, and I love that. And, um, but you and I also recently connected since I just became a brand ambassador for the Too Pretty brand, which I'm so excited about. Um, and I think it's really great, um, especially because I am getting more involved with the brand to have you on the show. So, um, I would love to know, first of all, because I actually don't know that much about your amateur boxing career, but I do know that you used to compete in boxing, and long before women's boxing was really even respected or on the map at all. So, I'd love to know a little bit more about how you got into the sport, and then how you got started competing, and kind of what your journey was in terms of actually getting into the ring. Ha, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you don't hear about le- loans like that anymore. <laughs> What's that? I said you don't hear about loans in that nature anymore with the way the financial market is. <laughs> coaching and then they get into having their own gym and you kind of went the other direction um and I would love to know too because especially at that time like not only were women boxers very rare um and I'm sure still a lot of stigma around women's boxing um what was it like to be a female gym owner and coach and like operating in that space (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so it's 
But then, you know, when I would be face to face with someone and they would start to kind of quiz me about boxing and uh, they would think that I didn't know what I was talking about. Like, it could be about fires or a fight that happened last weekend or whatever. But, mm-hmm. And then I would just school them on it and they go, oh. <laughs> <laughs> then they would respect me, you know. Right. Uh, and, you know, I, I felt like I had to prove myself constantly. And now I just don't feel like I want to spend my energy doing that anymore. I don't feel like I need to. So if somebody questions something, I just smile at them and say, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, because even now, because like female fighters, you know, that's a, no one really blinks an eye anymore. But in terms of coaches and gym owners and kind of people operating in more of the leadership capacities, you still really don't see that very much. A female coach or referee or anyone in those kind of spaces is still um, not very common. And I feel like there is still a little bit of stigma, especially if like a, a male fighter is training under a female coach. Um, that's something you really don't see very often. So why do you think more women aren't into the sort of higher level aspects of the fight game in terms of coaching or even in terms of the business side? Um, even though they've sort of caught up in terms of the actual, um, fighters, Wow, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I don't know if they feel in their mind somehow that they're not capable. It's really hard to say, you know, why we don't have more women uh, coaching or opening gyms. Um, you know, I, I can't say, oh, the opportunity's not there because the opportunity wasn't there for me either. Right. But you kind of have to make the opportunity. You have to make things happen. So, um, and as a fighter, you, know, you kind of have that Right? You're, you're aggressive and you know you don't give up so I think a lot of them have that um, but I, you know, I'm not really sure why they don't take it to you know and, and there are some fighters that really want to just be fighters uh, and I think there's always a stigma whether it's male or female when you're a competitor or something that if you're then a coach then that means you weren't a good competitor or mm-hmm. you're hanging the gloves up and so people look at you differently like you're not as much as you were as a competitor and I think that stigma also uh, still is prevalent and you know it could be something that that could be something that affects them as well yeah that's a really good point I know not know if I would have thought of that but I definitely think that that's uh, a really valid point and probably the case for a lot of people um, and I would love to know because you are, I sort of consider you like a pioneer in the coaching space and especially because, um, you were one of the coaches for female amateur boxers for the first ever Olympic qualifiers. Um, what was that like? And I know that it was kind of eye catching, um, you know, first of all, the fact that women were not going to be in the Olympics for boxing, but then, you know, having a female actually cornering and coaching, for those uh, tournaments, um, what was that like? Did you feel like there was a lot of attention on you? No, there was not attention on me. Um, it was almost like everybody wanted to not pay attention. Oh my gosh, like the opposite. Oh my God. Yeah, almost the opposite. So, kind of like, oh, it's going to pass and we won't see <laughs> 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 But uh, I took a, I did block her and she boxed at 112 pounds, and um, I had to bring her up in weight because uh, she was 106, and so there were only three weight classes in the, the, uh, in the Olympics, mm-hmm. and so um, we scheduled three qualifiers for that year, obviously before the Olympics, and we just traveled around the United States to go to these qualifiers, and so we would get there, well, we would do the weigh-ins and all that jazz, and so we'd be, um, you know, scheduled to box, and I'd be wrapping her hands, and it was like clockwork. There was always a coach that came up to us and asked me if we needed help. Oh, and my gosh. I needed help. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was and it's always the case. And, you know, you go, oh, it's really nice of you, but as on the same side, it's, it's kind of like, oh, I'm not capable. Right. Um, but, and then, uh, let's say boxing, so we would go, I didn't have a second in the corner, which is what, you know, generally when you're boxing, you have two people in your corner. Yep. And we felt like we didn't need a second. I felt like I could handle it. She felt like I could handle it. Uh, so, I mean, essentially, you're coaching someone in the corner, you're getting a 
stool, you're giving them water, you know, you're doing all of that. Not one person can't essentially have that. So uh, we would get ready to box. I would, she'd get in the ring. I'd be down on the apron, and by clockwork, there'd be a coach from the sidelines coming up. Oh, do you guys need a second? You need some help. You need some help. And she just would look down from the ring and she'd say, "We got this." <laughs> 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 I love and that's that. Like, you know, that's kind of how it went. But it was a great experience. And, uh, we had a great time. And uh, it was, yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. But I was definitely, uh, I don't know, like, I was not really supposed to be there. It's kind of how we felt, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, and I would love to, now, because I know that now you're a little bit more business focused. Um, and you have so many things going on with the stables and Too Pretty and Primetime Boxing and even all of the content creation you do. I would love to know, like, what is a day in the life of Carrie like and how do you juggle all of these different ventures that you have? Because you really do so many things. I'm like, I don't know how she does all of it. <laughs> I don't know either. Um, <laughs> well, I mean, essentially, I get up around it depends on if I'm training uh, anyone at the stables. Um, if I'm training folks at the stables, I get up at five. If I'm not, I get up at six. And then it's, uh, you know, if I'm not training anyone, get up at six, do the dishes, you know, have some tea, hop on the computer, um, you know, see what's going to happen that day, make sure my calendar, my phone is up to date so I know what exactly I need to be doing. And uh, taking my pup to the dog park. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, she's got to go twice a day. Oh, yeah. And then uh, coming back and uh, doing more work on the computer. So it could be one day could be working on the, the brand. It could be uh, working on the, the YouTube channel or uh, the content creation. And then I go work out. And then when I work out, I, I try to videotape my workout so that I can actually have content. So yeah. I'm kind of doing that in between the workout. Um, and you kind of kill two birds with one stone with that in a way, too, which I think is just really smart. What's that? I think, um... It, you kind of kill two birds with one stone with that, where like you're working out, but then you're also creating content, and I just think that that's so smart um, to do that. Yeah, it takes a little bit of time, uh, but when I have to do uh, more technical content, so like the how tos, and you know, it could be a specific combination, it has to be very broken down. So then it's on those. You know, days, I guess not really, it can't be done during my workout. Right, right. You know, it's whatever. But, um, but yeah, so then I work out, then uh, come home, eat, um, work again. I might be shipping uh, things out for the two pretty brands. And then I go in to train my peeps at the stables. And then back home at, I don't know, 8.30ish. And um, try to wrap up the day, see whatever I missed that I was supposed to do on my calendar, I got to push it over to the next day, <laughs> and, then, uh, and then eat and then go to sleep. I mean, that's kind of how it works every yeah. day. It, 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 your schedule is like, wake up, work, work out, work more, and then like go to sleep. <laughs> So it means that you're like always working, but you have such a um, amazing work ethic, and like everything that you've been able to create, I think is just so inspiring. And um, and I love how it all kind of connects together too, because obviously all your projects are a little bit different and have a little bit of a different application or reach, but they all kind of come back to boxing and empowerment, and um, especially for females um, in the fight game. So I love how it all kind of. Um, has like a common purpose and I'm sure that probably also helps even in terms of like mentally transitioning between different projects or different businesses um, as you go about your day. Yeah, you know, the, the interesting thing is that when I started the brand a few years ago, I made this uh, stupid decision that I was going to separate myself from the brand. You know, I thought it's not about me, it's not about my boxing. Uh, it's just about the brand and it's about empowering girls and women and it's about them. And so for the first year, year and a half, it was completely separated. Um, because I didn't want people to think it was just a boxing brand. I wanted them to know that, you know, you could pretty much do anything in life and that, that was, you're never too pretty to do that. It wasn't just combat sports. 
I, I do think of you, but I um, I don't think of it as like the Carrie Williams brand. I feel like there's a really strong message of empowerment behind it, but then I almost think of you as like the leader of it, um, like leading this movement, but then, you know, there's so many other components and so many other people involved, and it has a really strong message behind it, but you're connected, but not um, to where it, um, it's like overwhelming. Because I know that, like, sometimes... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it totally works. Because I know what you mean with, like, sometimes when people attach themselves too closely to the brand, it's more about them versus the actual message. Um, So, yeah, so I love that it it has a really good balance to it, I think. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. So I would love to know in terms of your own sort of um, spectatorship or fandom, do you watch boxing or MMA or any other combat sports, what's kind of your appetite in terms of your fandom and actually watching fights? Well, I watch boxing and MMA. Uh, it's funny, my, my boyfriend actually got me more into MMA because I hadn't really watched it. Oh. Um, Yeah, because like boxing people and MMA people don't get along, they always say. MMA both um, and do you uh, pay like more attention to the women do you like watching the men equally like what's also kind of your divide in terms of gender are really a fan of specific fighters and like they don't really follow the rest of the sport they just follow like these specific people um like someone like a conor mcgregor what might be a sort of mainstream example but <laughs> where they're like i don't know anything about it but you know they're a fan of the person and they're that's who they're rooting for um or i even know in, in an mma example um because i'm originally from cleveland and cleveland is very much like a hometown um sports kind of place and uh Stipe Miocic who is the former UFC heavyweight champion he's from Cleveland and so a lot of Cleveland people were um like fans of Stipe they didn't really know about MMA and actually the UFC came to Cleveland for the first time when he was champion um and Cleveland is not really an MMA kind of place 
Um, but a lot of people were into Stipe specifically. Um, so I feel like some people are like that where they follow a specific person or people and then other people are really big fans of the sport and they might not like follow or be particularly enamored by like one particular fighter. Um, or some people are kind of, I feel like I'm more in the middle where I have some people that I'm like die hard for, but I love the sport as a whole, especially MMA as a spectator. And, you know, I have to watch all the fights. I have to know like everything that's going on. Um, but I do have, <laughs> but I have specific people that I also sort of root for and that I'm always so excited to see fight. Um, so yeah, it's interesting how that goes though, how you can kind of get fans of different breeds. Yeah, definitely. And um, it's funny because you're saying that made me think of um, this quote from Dana White because back when he was anti-women being in the UFC, um, he said that there was this one particular, he'd seen like back before Ronda Rousey in those days, um, he had watched just an amateur um, kickboxing fight, I believe, and um, it was a real, he said it was like a real mismatch between the two girls. It was like one of them looked like a killer, and then one of them looked like he'd taken like three Tybo classes. And um, yeah, and, then, and watching that, he, he just thought that like there wasn't um, like deep enough talent, and there were going to be too many of those kind of situations of um, the mismatches, and then it, it just is very um, unpleasant to watch as a viewer. Um, and so, which is, so I thought that's really interesting. And, you know, and now I think too, like there's definitely the momentum uh, for even boxing, especially is, uh, really shifting for the women. Cause obviously in MMA, you know, it's pretty gender equal. It's probably not a hundred percent, but you know, it's, it's pretty damn close in terms of coverage and pay and all those things now. Um, and especially with women getting an equal opportunity and being even treated the same in the sport, um, and especially being able to be at the highest level in the UFC, I think kind of opened the floodgates for um, the rest of it. And, you know, women's boxing though, was kind of having this moment. And I feel like especially in 2018, you know, we're seeing um, Clarissa Shields headlining uh, fight cards on Showtime, and there's Michaela Mayer, who's the first person signed um, to, T to TR Boxing, and then um, Cecilia Bruckhouse um, was, I believe, the first woman to be on um, HBO, and there's kind of this momentum, and then The Zone just had this big press conference yesterday, and Katie Taylor um, is going to be taking on Cindy Serrano, and that's going to be on there. Um, and when, oh, yeah. yeah, oh my god, I'm so excited for that, <laughs> right? Yes, oh my gosh. Oh man, I, I can't wait to watch her tonight. Me neither, when I heard about that, I was like, oh my gosh, that is going to be an amazing fight. That's like a female super fight, which is awesome, uh, yeah. right? Oh my gosh. Yeah. And I've, I've actually trained under her a little bit. Um, she lives in New York too. So, um, oh my gosh. Yeah, that's so exciting. And yeah, there's all this momentum though, where it's not even just one woman, where I just named like five or six different people um, who and are getting opportunities, are getting on TV, are really breaking into the mainstream. Um, do you feel like there's kind of this momentum shift happening in the boxing world? Yeah, and that's an interesting point too because I definitely feel like 
MMA has kind of it's kind of been a trickle down effect in a way um, to women's boxing, and I'm not sure a lot of people would have predicted um, that to happen. And I think, do you think even? Because um, I know even like for myself, I first got into combat sports through MMA, and then boxing was kind of after that. Um, and I feel like if I never got into MMA though, I probably never would have gotten into boxing. And um, do you think that it, um, it, it's sort of helping to fuse this sort of gap between like MMA people and boxing people? Because um, there definitely is such a difference between the two sports and like there's this history of like the fans being very different and the communities are very different. Do you feel like the women's movement in combat sports in a way is kind of helping to um, kind of shift the momentum in both ways where everyone kind of wins and there's just more attention all around? Yeah, I definitely think so. I think that it's, it's starting to mesh a little better. I think the fans are starting to, uh, you know, see something really interesting and fun to watch in each sport. Uh, I think it's just, it's just really challenging because uh, initially, you know, there would be MMA fans that would say, oh, well, it's, you know, boxing, oh, what is boxing? It's nothing. But, but what they found out is, over the years of MMA and UFC, that the guys who had really great boxing skills were doing really well. Yep. Uh, <laughs> and so, and then the women started to, you know, get into the octagon. And again, the, the females that had better boxing skills were the ones who were winning more. So, and boxing isn't just striking, and I think a lot of people don't understand that. You know, it's like, oh, you know, it's nice to feel. Well, it's not just boxing. You need to have movement. You need to have footwork. You need to have defense. And you need to know your range. You know, those are all boxing skills. Uh, so I think that boxers initially were turned off by MMA because a lot of the fans were just kind of like, oh, it doesn't really matter. Boxing is just whatever. It's just a part of it. It's just a, just a little piece of it. Yeah. The boxers and um, people that are more stand-up based are, are have generally more success, and I think it's hard to not have that. Like you can be a black belt in jujitsu or judo or have like this really high caliber uh, grappling background, but if you don't know how to strike or how to move or how to slip punches, um, it seems like you can't really get anywhere in MMA, and I don't know, it's not even necessarily the other way around, because you see um, somebody like a Holly Holm, who really only does striking in terms of her offense, um, you know, but she, but that hasn't really, like, been a huge issue for her in terms of success, um, you know, I don't think she needs to go out and get a black belt in some kind of grappling art in order to succeed in MMA, <laughs> right? So, but it's kind of in terms of the other way around, like even like Ronda Rousey being a great example, you know, Olympic caliber judo practitioner, all of these, she's a sixth degree black belt actually, you know, you know, all of, so many credentials, um, you know, but she doesn't really have great striking and then that was exposed at a certain point and I think to the girls in the striking arts got more into MMA as well. Um, Cause yeah, I think for a long time it was a little bit more grappling heavy. And, um, yeah. you know, yeah, and obviously, like, she, um, with the striking skill set that she has, it, it doesn't translate anymore. Um, like, she would really have yeah. to immerse herself in striking to, I think, succeed. And, um, yeah, so I think that's a really good point, though, because you definitely have to have those skills, and I think especially the movement and the footwork and the defense in order to really succeed in MMA anymore. Also, you need to know what it feels like to stand in front of somebody and be punched in the face and know what to do with that. <laughs> when you just know judo, you don't really know what that feels like. Um, or if you just know uh, jiu-jitsu, right? It's very, very different. Um, so when you, get, when you get hit and you don't, you're just kind of stunned, you're like, I don't even know what to do with that. Um, it's 
throws you off completely. So yeah, I think if you if you come in and your um, your skill set is boxing, you can learn all of the other things and do well in the in the next. But if it's the other way around and you're coming in with a skill set of what is judo, jiu-jitsu, whatever, and then you're gonna try to learn boxing after that, that's much more challenging because essentially boxing it, it is a much tougher sport to, to not just learn, but to actually master. So, um, and that comes from, you know, somebody who's been in the industry for 20 years. But, oh, yeah. um, but I do think that you can do much better in MMA if you actually had boxed before, and that was your first skill set. And then you learn everything else after that. Um, so, you know, but I think that's happening. I think um, you're going to get, like, more of that happening. Um, if they're coming in young and they have time to work a lot more on boxing, then they're able to do well. Um, and it also depends on the athlete. You know, some athletes are able to process and learn uh, a skill set faster than another. So, but yeah, it's uh, it's been an interesting ride uh, watching the the MMA and then how it's progressed and um, and just seeing the transition of it. Yeah, it really is. And I would love to know your thoughts on um, people crossing over. Because, you know, obviously we've seen a lot of boxers cross over into MMA. And then now you're seeing a little bit of MMA fighters wanting to cross over into boxing. Um, and it's, it's not uncommon really either direction anymore. Um, what do you think about, um, like, do you think that, and I feel like overall boxers, um, crossing over into MMA have been more successful than MMA fighters going over into boxing. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Um, and probably for a lot of the reasons you just said, but, um, what do you think about, um, like, do you think MMA fighters could succeed in a traditional um, boxing ring, do you think that they have to just only like go to an actual sort of boxing gym and actually immerse themselves that way and not kind of rely on like uh, their MMA training to get them through? Like, what do you think about all the crossover stuff that's kind of happening? Yeah, because boxing is just boxing and so if you're coming in as an MMA fighter and you know a little bit of this, a little bit of that, um, then you don't know a lot about boxing. So uh, what happens is if they have a much harder time trying to cross over into boxing, uh, and nine times out of ten would get beat by somebody who's just done boxing. So yeah, I think that's why it's been an easier transition, you know, for boxers to go into the MMA and be successful. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I would love to know now a little bit. I want to get some tips from you on boxing training because um, a lot of people. I think really of all ages, um, especially women of all ages, I think nowadays um, really want to get into boxing or see people get into boxing. I know even um, I've talked to so many people who are like, oh, I really like want to start training or I really want to like take a class. Or and um, I would love to know what kind of your tips are for people who want to do it but don't know where to start or want to know kind of the best avenue. Is it a personal trainer? Is it going to classes? Um, what do you kind of recommend in terms of someone who wants to get into it? Well, uh, geez, I would say uh, first they need to decide if they actually want to learn boxing or if they just want to do a boxing workout because those are two different things. Mm -hmm. uh, and then once they decide, you know, oh, I actually want to learn, I want to do it as a workout, but I actually want to learn the sport, then they're going to want to find uh, a more traditional uh, boxing uh, and you know, go that route. Um, there are a lot of um, there are a lot of fitness programs now that incorporate boxing, which is great. But if someone really wants to learn the sport, they're not going to get really far with just doing um, you know the boxing fitness classes. Um, at the you know they've got a lot of new ones coming up that are you know like the Soul Cycle of boxing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so it, and I think the other thing is that uh, sometimes what happens is there might be some uh, some ladies that go to these classes and they all of a sudden say I'm a boxer. Uh, and first of all, it actually just respects the sport. But the other thing is that you don't want 
somebody to feel overconfident with a skill set that they don't have because they can get them in trouble. So uh, I think, um, you know, there's just a fine line of deciding first, like, do you want to learn boxing or do you just want to do it as a workout? And then once you make that decision, then you're going to know what direction to go. You're going to either go to a traditional boxing club where you're learning or you're going to go to more of a fitness, you know, uh, boxing uh, program. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really good advice, actually. Um, yeah, there's so, girl, especially in New York, how many, like, soul cycle boxings there are, um, <laughs> many, many, yeah. um, which is, yeah, not bad either, but yeah, definitely, like, it's a different, um, for a different purpose, and I think all of that is, like, really true, um, and what do you think in terms of, for women, do you think that there's benefits specifically for training with a female coach or trainer, um, like over a man or like if someone's like, let's say they're looking to go and actually learn boxing and go to a boxing gym. Um, and do you think that there's a benefit in like seeking out a woman specifically to train with, or do you think it doesn't really matter? Um, what do you think about that in terms of, um, female coaches to work with a man and think, oh, he's going to be able to train me better, I'm going to learn more from him, then the female coaches can't make any money and can't really get anywhere, and then, you know, we're kind of stuck still with this, like, male-dominated kind of mentality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. It takes you right back to that, and that's really what's happening. So it's not just men not wanting to be trained by women, but it's actually women who don't either. Yeah. I do actually believe it, and it, as crazy as it sounds, I'm like, I can, I can understand how people would think that way, um, but yeah, it definitely is something that um, needs to change, so I like everything that you said there, and um, what are, you know, going back a little bit to like a boxing workout, if you decide like you, you just want to box as a workout, um, what are kind of your tips for doing that? And you have such great YouTube videos, I want to say first, and I would definitely encourage all of you to check out Carrie's YouTube channel because she um, posts all of her boxing workouts and films them and really shows you like exactly what she does. And I love the way that she combines strength training um, with bag work. I think it's really great. Um, and yeah, so what are kind of your tips in terms of like doing an actual workout that's boxing based? Um, I would say just get the basic fundamentals down first, um, and that's just your stance and then throwing, uh, you know, your, your jab, your right hand, left hook, some basic, um, get down to basic head movement, like slips and bobble weight, and then you can put those together for combination. Um, as far as uh, incorporating that into a workout. That's the thing is that you still have to have some sort of a little bit of foundation to do it as a workout. But I mean, whether you're shadow boxing or hitting a punching bag, you can definitely incorporate that with strength training, which is what I do a lot of. Um, and I just, uh, we're creating a program right now actually that does both. 
workout routine is because I know when we were kind of going through your day to day um you mentioned doing a workout so do you work out every day um and like how long do you work out what's kind of your um routine so what I try to do is work out well I do work out six days a week so uh, and then what I try to do uh is change the workout a bit each time so we'll say four days a week I'm doing boxing with weight training and then uh, maybe three of those days I'm just doing strength training but with a little bit of shadow boxing um, and then on occasion I'll add in cardio so like we're getting ready to go to Vegas next weekend and I have to be in a swimsuit so <laughs> <laughs> I'm doing more cardio Got to burn those calories, day, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, in terms of like speaking of cardio and weight loss um you because you were on the tv show fit to fat to fit um and you gained 40 pounds on the show and then had to lose it and so i would love to know um just first of all that's such an interesting thing to have done um (laughs) not something that most people do so what was that like in terms of because I'm sure, too, that kind of turned your whole world upside down in terms of your workout regime and your eating and all of that stuff, um, especially when you were gaining the weight. So what was it like to go through that process and even the change in your body and everything that comes along with gaining and then losing weight? Uh, yes. Uh, so for four months, I couldn't work out at all. So no strength training, no nothing. And then pretty much just eat crap. So that I would gain weight, and the idea was to get into the mindset and the body of uh, my friend and client uh, who was about 80 pounds overweight, and so it was really to just not do anything and just eat bad. And so the first couple of weeks, I'm not gonna lie, I enjoyed it. <laughs> it was it was great to eat all the things that I never never eat, you know, donuts and breakfast burritos and sour cream and cheese and, you know, it's all of these things that I normally wouldn't um, partake in. Uh, and then what happened was my blood pressure started to get really high. I had a doctor, um, but, I mean, long story short, I was able to still gain 40 pounds uh, within the four months. And um, I was very uncomfortable trying to sleep. Uh, my feet hurt just walking my dog two blocks. Uh, it was just uncomfortable. Let's just say that it was an uncomfortable experience. And uh, of course, none of my clothes said I had to go to the Goodwill and buy some like oversized clothes that I could deal with for a few months. Um, and then, you know, the, and then it was time to lose the weight. So I started to do all the tricks that I knew because, you know, being a boxer, you, you know how to lose weight. Yep. You know, you figure it out. So I used all my old tricks and it wasn't working. Um, my body, because I was so overweight, it, it just was like, no, what you did before won't work now. And so I kind of freaked out and 
uh, I decided that I was going to do the keto diet. And that was hard for me because I was always used to, like, low fat, you know, high protein, mm-hmm. you know, vegetables, low carb, low fat, whatever. Yeah, and keto is very and, and keto, oh, Yeah, it's just all fat. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started the keto diet, and it actually started to work for me. And I stayed on that for the entire time and um, worked my ass off. I mean, I, of course, I worked out every single day. I was running four miles a day on top of all the other workouts I was doing. So, because wow. uh, I only had four months to lose it. And um, oh, yeah. so I really just killed myself for four months. Um, but yeah, it was, it, was hard. it was much harder than I thought it would be to lose that weight. I came in really cocky and thought, oh, I'll put on weight, I'll lose it, I don't care, whatever. And it wasn't easy at all. So I do have some empathy for for those who are, you know, that that much of a weight or even more because your body becomes insulin resistant. And if you have any carbs whatsoever, your body just basically won't lose weight. Uh, it's a very interesting thing that happens with our bodies when we're, you know, 30, 40 pounds or more overweight. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. It was, it was hard. <laughs> yeah, I know. It sounds like it. And I feel like a lot of people, and I feel like this ties into boxing too, because I've heard of a lot of people who will box to lose weight. And I even know a lot of the soul cycle kind of boxing workout places will kind of advertise themselves as, you know, a, a high, you can burn, you know, a thousand calories in an hour, do a boxing workout, and you can burn so many calories in a boxing workout, and it's so much more fun than like running or doing like Stairmaster or something. Um, um, do you recommend, like, if someone wants to lose weight, and let's say, like, wants to go the boxing route in terms of losing weight um, for a workout, do you think that it's an effective workout in terms of cardio and being able to lose weight? Um, what's kind of, like, your experience and um, your tips in terms of um, boxing for weight loss? Yeah, I completely agree. I think you, you lose a bunch of weight through boxing uh, because it's aerobic and it's anaerobic. So you do, um, you're doing like a lot of, um, almost like these little plyos and you're doing, a, you know, some type of training. You're doing um, interval training. Like interval training is a big, you know, key word um, for burning fat. And so, yeah, I think boxing is a great way to work out to lose weight. Uh, but what happens is, if you, you know, you're not, you don't really know how to do boxing and you're just kind of throwing your arms around. Well, what happens with the full cycle of the boxing places is that they add in a lot of other things besides just boxing so that people do sweat. Because if they're just throwing their arms and hitting a bag, there's not a whole lot going on because they're not engaging the entire body. Right, so what right. happens is they have to add a shit ton of ab work because they're not engaging their core. So then they're adding a bunch of ab work so that they can get to keep in the abs. But also adding, you know, uh, jump squats and box jumps and burpees and mount climbers and a lot of other things um, so, that they, so that you could actually get that workout that you need. Because it takes time to learn boxing and to actually learn how to use your body effectively in boxing to get the proper workout you need. So they just kind of add everything in, which is perfect because then you feel like, I'm a badass, I'm hitting stuff, and then, you know, I'm sweating, and I feel like a beast when I leave, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, because I know for myself, like, I lost, like, depending on the day, like, some of the way between, like, probably 45 and 50 pounds, um, in, I would say mostly in the second half of last year. And um, I always thought like I could not, I could never lose weight, and I had this mindset that like it just it was never going to happen. I was always going to be heavier. Um, and it's weird now. It's so weird to like look back at pictures of myself and everything. And um, I feel like, and I started kind of doing like the Soul Cycle of Boxing kind of places. Um, but I definitely, I knew more still than most people going in there, but then I did some actual training at a boxing gym, um, and really got some good training in technique and really learning and even like, you know, throwing your, um, you know, cause you should really be punching with all your weight and your whole body versus just arm punches. Um, and just, you know, really learn the proper techniques. And even when I would go 
back to like the soul cycle of boxing kind of classes because sometimes it's fun and you know and some of the, it's dark and they have the music and you know it's a whole vibe and um I uh, felt like I was getting like such a better workout because I had the knowledge and like knew how to actually because obviously they're not really correcting the form and stuff and I knew how to actually um you know throw a really good hook and like you know really turn into it and get my hips into it and I would and I would see people like throwing these arm punches and like and I was like oh my god they're like getting like probably like a fourth of the workout that I'm giving right now <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, definitely, yeah. So I definitely agree with all that. And I think for anyone that wants to lose weight with it, like if you learn the proper technique, it, it gets you so much farther. Um, yeah, so this was such a great conversation with you, and I feel like I've learned so many things, and it's so awesome to get to pick your brain. Um, and you, you have so many different online channels and with all your different businesses and ventures. So, um, for people that want to learn more about you or learn more about Too Pretty, um, or maybe train at the stables if they're in the Los Angeles area, where can they find you? Um, give us links and information to all of your stuff. That of all people, it's a football player. Um, very nice. And yeah, thank you so much again, Carrie, for being on the podcast and for everyone listening. Also, make sure to follow Female Fight Fans. All of our social media is at Female Fight Fans, and then our website is femalefightfans.com. And if you enjoyed this episode and love the podcast, make sure to leave us a five star review on iTunes. Um, definitely give us a rating because it helps to boost the show and get us. Um, more listeners so thank you once again Carrie for being on today and I hope everyone listening has a great week and until next time